What's up out there, everybody? I hope you're all fantastic. This is the final episode of my top 100 action movies from the 1990s series. We have reached the top 10 of the decade. If you've missed any of the other episodes, they'll all be linked in this video for you guys to check out. In this video, we're diving into 10 world-class action movies that I think stand the test of time and are the 10 best of the decade. So let's dive into it. Coming in at number 10 is a movie about a cop who can be great on a good day and on a bad day. He is the best there is because he is Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis is John McClane and the film would be 1995's Die Hard with a Vengeance from director John McTiernan, also starring Samuel L. Jackson and Jeremy Irons. Now after Die Hard 2 basically remade the first Die Hard, Die Hard with a Vengeance was able to come in and just take the franchise to completely new avenues while still maintaining the same tone and vibe that I think made the first film so iconic and timeless, sort of lethal weapon inspired with Willis's pairing with Samuel L. Jackson and the elevation of the buddy comedy themes that actually works for the needs of this creative plotline that has plenty of spectacle but still feels relatively grounded and realistic. Willis and Jackson, I think, uh, working together to solve clues is a great time and it's because the contained elements of the franchise are completely removed. I mean, unlike the confines of Nakatomi Plaza or an airport, the entire city of New York is the new playground and it allowed the film to incorporate so much more into the action. You get all the shootouts and fight sequences with McClane doing his thing, but Die Hard with a Vengeance was also able to deliver impressive action set pieces like the taxi chase through Central Park, the chase sequence on the highway, and even when things get a little bit too over the top in the flooded tunnel, this is still the best film in the franchise after the first film. I have a comic book action movie for my number nine film about a man with the power of an immortal and the soul of a human and the heart of a hero. And the movie is, of course, 1998's Blade, starring Wesley Snipes, Chris Christopherson, and Boucher Wright, Stephen Dorff, from director Stephen Norrington. I certainly think Blade gets a bit overlooked when it comes to CBMs that would go on to reinvigorate the genre. And sure, this Daywalker isn't on the same level as Spider-Man or X-Men, but this film is still one of the best comic book movies of all time. And this role would go on to be iconic for Wesley Snipes, who just lived and breathed this character perfectly for the needs of the plot and just the tone overall. I think Norrington's direction is edgy and gritty, but still very sleek and just endlessly stylish. He's able to create a delightfully ominous atmosphere that just runs throughout the duration of this film. The soundtrack is pulse pounding and able to elevate the mood and vibe of any given scene with ease. And Steven Dorff is just soaking in the villain vibes with gusto to feel like a suitable matchup for Snipes. And when the action kicks in and Blade is taking out vampires, the result is a timeless ride of carnage and mayhem and martial arts violence. It's absolutely raining gunfire for my number eight pick, a full throttle Hong Kong action flick from the visionary director John Woo. It stars Chow Yun Fat as a cop who has brains, brawn, and an instinct to kill in 1992's Hard Boiled, also starring Tony Leung, Philip Chan, and Teresa Mo. Now, I will admit that Hard Boiled does follow a genre checklist of cliches from an action standpoint, as well as from an action storytelling standpoint, but surprisingly, in the hands of John Woo behind the camera and from the straight edged performances led by Chow Yun Fat that give the impression this is the first time this story has been told just makes this bonanza of bullets a joyful ride of carnage and cop themed suspense. This film goes from grounded to a bit ridiculous but is consistently played straight and the elegance in the waves of violence is just a sight to behold. The Body count in this film is endless in this two-hour mission to take down a mobster and his crew, and it delivers everything from confined gunplay to large-scale battle sequences with machine guns and pistols and a variety of other weapons and pyrotechnics. I mean, John Woo indulges in the spectacle with Hard Boiled, and Chow would bring his usual dual pistols to the forefront in this film that not all of you may be aware of, but it's one that has certainly inspired probably many of your favorites in the genre recently.
Now, my number seven pick would deliver a showdown that Los Angeles has never seen before, and the result would be one of my all-time favorite films, and it's 1995's Heat from director Michael Mann, starring Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, Val Kilmer, Tom Sizemore, and many others to complete a world-class ensemble. Now, Heat is without question one of my all-time favorite films. I think it's one of the best crime dramas of all time and would easily top many of my all-time lists. However, as an action movie, when the violence does ignite in heat, Michael Mann's classic is also one of the best action movies from the decade. This L.A. set saga doesn't deliver a ton of action. It's character and story driven, which is really what you want from a crime drama centered on a team of high end thieves playing a game of cat and mouse with a relentless detective. Yet when the action does burst onto the screen, the direction from Mann, the choreography of the sequences and just the visceral tone is impressive. The downtown shootout is legendary in the genre and seeing De Niro and Pacino sharing the screen and having their final showdown is what makes cinema amazing. The ensemble cast and Heat is top tier as well. Everybody gets their moments to shine and overall I think Heat is precision filmmaking at its finest. Coming up next at number six is an action thriller that promised to deliver 100% pure adrenaline and that was the result when Keanu Reeves and Patrick Swayze would team up for 1991's Point Break from director Catherine Bigelow, also starring Laurie Petty and the great, insanely great Gary Busey. Point Break is just another film that I have a lifelong love for. I think it's a perfect hybrid of 80s and 90s action, and the direction from Catherine Bigelow is flawless. She creates just an alluring atmosphere that reeks of West Coast summer, endless sex appeal, adrenaline, and just living life with no rules, and it's just really classic action filmmaking. I think Keanu Reeves and Patrick Swayze are perfectly cast in their roles. Both breathe life into these characters to make them very much their own. Swayze, I mean, the guy would go on to be legendary as Bodhi. And the plot of surfers supplying their summer by wearing the masks of dead presidents and robbing banks is just fantastic story plotting. I think Point Break is summer at the cinema. It's peak summer in vibes. And the endless string of action gives this film just an escapable pace. It's uh, from the foot chases to the car sequences, all the surfing, the skydiving, football on the beach, showdowns at the airports, fights in the sand, robbing banks and raiding stash houses point break never takes its foot off the gas there's a seductive appeal to point break and why even 30 years from now i think this film will still be effortlessly cool We have reached the top five and my number five movie is one that would be the theme of one of the best first person shooter video games in history. It would also be the introduction of a completely new James Bond when Piers Brosnan would star in 1995's GoldenEye from director Martin Campbell, also starring Sean Bean, Isabel Skorupko and Famke Janssen. Martin Campbell and Piers Brosnan would definitely pump life back into the James Bond franchise with 95's GoldenEye, and to this day, I think it's still one of the best Bond films ever made and easily the most well-crafted entry in the Brosnan era. I think uh, GoldenEye is a perfect blend of intricate storytelling, uh, impactful plotting, and just enough character development to give the film a playful seriousness that connects all the equally intricate and inventive action sequences together perfectly. I think uh, Brosnan Brosnan was effortlessly suave in the role of Bond and seeing him doing a lot of his own stunts just gave the action much more of an immersive atmosphere and visual appeal. This was really in reinvigoration for the franchise and I think Sean Bean as 006 is just a great first villain for this new Bond who's diving off dams and outsmarting henchmen and making love and getting his gun off and riding bikes off cliffs, flying planes and dangling from planes and just racing tanks in the street throughout a just calculating adventure with a great cast and a timeless appeal to the adventure. My number four movie is one of the biggest somber blockbusters of the 90s that starred one of the biggest action stars from the 80s and the 90s. It's Arnold Schwarzenegger's True Lies from 1994, directed by James Cameron, also starring Jamie Lee Curtis, Tia Carrera, and Tom Arnold. 
Arnold Schwarzenegger would team up again with James Cameron and enter the world of spies and espionage for a film that is just filled with visually stunning action sequences as Arnold lives a double life trying to save the world from terrorist threats while also trying to be a suburban husband. And the result is a buffet of adventure and humor and action and suspense. The perfect recipe for a film that would go on to co-command the summer box office in 94. The plot is engaging and not over-layered, and the comedic bits, I think, just fit perfectly with the flow of the film. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis is equally as awesome as Arnold in this film, as she gets duped by a used car salesman, played up to amazing levels by uh, the late great Bill Paxton. I think Tom Arnold serves as precision comedic relief. He pairs surprisingly well with Arnold, and Sure, I will admit the villains are a bit too cartoonish, but it's nothing that hinders seeing Arnold riding horses in hotels and shooting up bathrooms and blowing up compounds and flying a fighter jet from making True Lies one of the decade's best action flicks. With that one in the books, we have reached my top three films, the top three action movies of the 90s. And for my number three pick, action will hit Rush Hour and the nonstop blockbuster Speed from 1994, directed by Jan DeBont, starring Keanu Reeves, Sandra Bullock, Dennis Hopper, Jeff Daniels, and an incredible ensemble cast. I have no doubt I put this film higher up on the list than most would probably place it on theirs, but Speed was a massive blockbuster hit in the summer of 94, and I do think it gets overlooked when thinking back to 90s action films that relied mostly on practical action and on-location shoots. Uh, Speed is just a full-throttle action film from start to finish, and it's a riveting, edge-of-your-seat story filled with thrills and close calls all over Los Angeles as Reeves' Jack Travin and Sandra Bullock's Annie race this bus rigged with bombs from the freeways to the side streets to the runways with just top tier endless gusto. I think Reeves is perfect in the lead here and both he and Bullock are extremely likable. They have a great chemistry together. It all just complements the nonstop ride of action adventure that this film takes you on. I think DeBond's direction is impressive. As I said, I think what he did in this film gets overlooked because this movie still looks great all these years later from the endless and intricate chase sequences down to the quieter moments to the shootouts to the uh, development of the world-class villain from Dennis Hopper. I think Speed is is precision crafted bonanza of summer movie spectacle and should be regarded as one of the decade's very best. Now, my number two pick is a sequel to an 80s classic. It's the same make, the same model, but this mission is different in the cinematic masterpiece that is 1991's Terminator 2, directed by James Cameron, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger, Linda Hamilton, Edward Furlong, and Robert Patrick. Only a select few sequels have been able to go a completely different direction from the first film like Terminator 2 Judgment Day was able to accomplish. T2 is bigger, bolder, and more spectacle-filled on nearly every level than the Terminator, but both are equally impressive, but for completely different reasons. I mean, Arnold turns good in this entry, and his mission to save John and Sarah Connor just took the world by storm in the summer of 1991. James Cameron's direction was top-notch, and his roller coaster of chase sequences and explosions and shootout and cutting edge special effects blended with good old stunt work just crafted a film that I think will stand the test of time. The continued world building is right in place to take things both forward and backwards and it makes the mission of these characters absolutely compelling as you just get to love Arnold and his dispensing of one-liners. T2 is without question a film that I think changed the game for filmmaking not only in the genre of action but for cinematic storytelling as a whole because the emotional intrigue in this movie is able to actually surpass the spectacle of the action to just make it all mean something. And for my number one pick, my selection for the best action movie from the 90s is a film that changed the game in terms of cinematic action. It was a film that challenged you to free your mind, and that film would be 1999's The Matrix from the Wachowskis, starring Keanu Reeves, Lawrence Fishburne, Carrie Ann Moss, and Hugo Weaving. I easily had this as my number one film. I think The Matrix was able to just up the bar for the genre right at the perfect time before we went into the next century of cinema. From a storytelling aspect, they don't get much more unique, inventive, or just 
thought provoking overall than the matrix and then from a pure action aspect the visceral gunplay and shootouts and the smoothly choreographed fight sequences don't get much better than edgier seat intensity than that i think the matrix is just an iconic film filled with iconic characters and iconic moments the ensemble cast is just a world-class grouping and the wachowskis took action filmmaking to new heights with new film techniques and cutting edge technology that just created visual action storytelling the world had never seen on the big screen i think uh, reeves would go on to just as we know be legendary in the role of neo carrie ann moss pumped life into trinity and morpheus in the hands of fishburn was the perfect just obi-wan for this world operating inside the world we're living in and no matter how many times you've seen the matrix if you come across it you'll end up taking the ride all over again before you even know it and that wraps up this series guys and my picks for the top 100 action movies from the 1990s once again all the other episodes will be linked in this series for you guys to check out if you missed any thank you guys all for taking this journey with me i hope you've enjoyed it i hope you were able to find some films you maybe forgot about or haven't been able to see that are now on your radar uh, i got a lot of ideas coming down after this series is wrapped up but i hope you guys are going to stick around and be excited to watch thank you so much for all your support and all your viewership it means the world to me once again i hope you guys have enjoyed this series and i will catch you in the next video and until then movies never say die this is jack burton and the pork shop express and i'm talking to whoever's listening out there love a war you gotta become war i suppose we have to register you as a lethal weapon you trying to say jesus christ can't hit a curveball